Um, let's talk about what the, the rest of this year is going to look like. We're into February. You said last week uh, on your earnings call that you were cautiously optimistic the demand would be returning in 2021. Robin, what I'm curious about is when you think the vaccine programme will start to have a meaningful impact on your numbers. Well, uh, hi, Guy. It's great to uh, be uh, with you. Um, you know, I, the good news is the vaccine programme here in the US is uh, underway now. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that um, as more and more people get vaccinated, uh, the size of uh, the population that is... Uh, ready and willing to fly uh, will uh, will increase. You know, we, we're currently expecting the first quarter of this year to look pretty much like the fourth quarter of uh, last year. So we haven't really seen, or we're not expecting to see much sequential improvement in that period. But, you know, hopefully as we get into the summer and beyond, uh, we start seeing, uh, we start seeing the amount, demand uh, rebound. Robin, governments are, are extremely uh, concerned at this point in time that their vaccine programmes could be undermined by mutations, by new variants, as a result of which what we're seeing is governments on both sides of the Atlantic, um, here in the UK and over there with you in the United States, effectively closing international borders. You are currently saying that you're still on track to launch your transatlantic service uh, with your long-range Airbus aircraft in the third quarter of this year. Robin, given the, the sort of changed tone from governments, isn't it more likely that, that long-haul international travel is going to be a 2022 story or possibly even a 2023 story? I, I don't think so yet, Guy. I mean, um, you know, we know there's a lot of pent-up demand for travel. We know that if... Uh, or we believe very... Uh, with a lot of conviction that if... Uh, if some of the uh, barriers to traveling are, are removed, like these uh, quarantine uh, procedures, then uh, you know we think demand can come back very quickly. So that's what we're, you know, that's what we're uh, counting on. That's what we're expecting. Now you're quite right. You know we are seeing uh, governments put in uh, these quarantine measures. We know that they act as a significant deterrent to uh, to travel. But uh, you know, as more and more people get vaccinated, at some point we have to open up. And, and I think about the UK. Uh, the UK has now left the EU. The UK wants to have a, a strong uh, presence on the global stage. Uh, trade and tourism is uh, are very important. And, uh, you know, you can't have that if your borders are closed. So I'm uh, confident at some point uh, we'll work through the quarantine issues and we'll see demand uh, come back because there's a lot of it out there, a lot of people waiting to fly. By some of the most optimistic forecasts, the idea that we get back to sort of pre-pandemic levels of, of travel, uh, both domestically and inter internationally, is still a couple of years away. Uh, I am curious about how you price tickets and how you get people back onto the planes in a way that's still going to be profitable, that's still going to keep margins uh, at a level that's going to appease investors. Well, you know, I think uh, JetBlue is 70 percent uh, uh, domestic. Uh, the international we have is uh, very close to home. Uh, we were a low-cost airline, uh, so our ability to—we've uh, always been about low fares and and better service. And so we think what we do is uh, positioned to uh, do very well as we come out of this uh, uh, pandemic. So um, you know we're not going to start offering low fares because we've always offered low fares. We're going to continue to do that, and um, you know we've already already seen in places like Florida, uh, which have uh, opened up to some. Uh, you know, a lot of a uh, lot of interest in uh, in people vacationing there uh, and traveling there. What concerns are you working through with regulators about your alliance with American in the Northeast? Well, we've reached an agreement uh, with the uh, Department of Transportation uh, regarding our partnership uh, with American. Uh, you know, we made a, a number of uh, concessions, including slot divestitures, to, to work through that. At the end of the day, this is going to be great for consumers. The number one thing that we can do in the Northeast to uh, create more low fares and more choice for customers is to have uh, more JetBlue uh, routes. Uh, it is a proven fact. When JetBlue starts flying against one of our legacy competitors, fares come tumbling down. Uh, and so, uh, but we've been blocked from doing that because we just haven't been able to get access to uh, enough slots to offer enough service. And so our partnership with American is going to allow us, first of all, to offer more JetBlue flying, which is going to be great for consumers, great for uh, more low fares, but also work with American on feeding some of their uh, longer haul flights um, and create a third, uh, effectively a third competitor out the Northeast uh, 
against the two legacies that we already see uh, both at JFK and at Newark. Robin, what would you like to see from the new administration when it comes to the airline sector? What would really help you out right now? Well, I think, look, we're all focused on the same thing. Uh, we've got to be focused on the vaccine program. We've got to be focused on uh, rolling out these vaccines as quickly as we can. Uh, that is what's going to get the economy back. You know, we can sit here and talk about the importance of uh, more payroll support. It has been fabulous in uh, allowing us to, as, as an industry, keep people in jobs, protect jobs. But it's, uh, it's not a long-term uh, solution. The long-term solution to bring the industry, bring the whole travel industry back to health uh, is to get people comfortable flying again. Uh, and that's going to require um, a, a much larger number of people vaccinated uh, before we start to see that in a significant way. Any chances or any consideration going forward here of consolidation in the industry, Robin? Well, you know, right now I think the industry is focused on uh, uh, survival. Uh, if we look around the world, um, I don't know if, uh, you know, airlines have had a lot of government assistance, um, and I think that has prevented a number of airlines... Uh, from uh, going uh, uh, bankrupt. It is possible that, you know, further consolidation uh, does occur. But at JetBlue, what we're focusing on is we're focusing coming out of this pandemic. Uh, we came into it with a strong balance sheet. Um, we've kind of uh, prepared um, uh, as best we can uh, to come out the other side. Um, uh, well, a partnership with American, I think, is going to um, be a big enabler for us to kind of uh, grow out of this uh, quickly. And we're focusing on the things that we can control to make sure that we can protect all of our crew members, uh, 21,000 crew members through this. Most analysts say, though, that it's either further joint ventures or consolidation. Of those two, which works for you the best? Well, they do different things. I mean, you traditionally see joint ventures uh, uh, across international markets because uh, you can't consolidate because of foreign ownership rules. And so this is a way for uh, you know, airlines in different countries to partner uh, uh, together. Um, you know, so uh, so that's that's one thing. I think um, consolidation is usually within regions. You know, I think the reality in the U.S. we've already seen a lot of consolidations. You've got four giant airlines with over 80 percent of the market. There's already a lack of competition in in many markets in the U.S., which is why our partnership with American is so exciting because it's going to bring more low fare options in the Northeast for for people. Um, so look, there's a role for there's a role for both. Um, airlines are going to need to focus on their survival. Airlines are going to have to focus on paying down their um, uh, additional debt, getting their balance sheets back into uh, good shape, and, and coming out the other side of this.